Simply put, during this operation referred to as Fast and Furious, we, the ATF, failed to fulfill one of our most fundamental obligations, to caretake the public trust, in part to keep guns out of the hands of criminals. When I became involved in this operation in late 2009, the ATF agents running it briefed me that the local Phoenix firearms dealers had provided them with a list of more than 40 individuals whom they believed to be purchasing guns for others, straw purchasers. Of these individuals, several were members or believed to have connections with Mexican drug cartels. Those identified straw purchasers were the initial suspects of this investigation. From the earliest days of that operation, after the briefing, I had no question that the individuals we were watching were acting as straw purchasers and that the weapons they purchased would soon be trafficked to Mexico and or other locales along the southwest border or other places in the United States. And ultimately, that these firearms would be used in a violent crime. However, we did nothing to intervene. Over the course of the next 10 months that I was involved, we monitored as they purchased handguns, AK-47 variants and 50 caliber rifles, almost daily at times. Rather than conduct any enforcement actions, we took notes, we recorded observations, we tracked movements of these individuals, we wrote reports, but nothing more. Knowing all the while, just days sometimes after these purchases, the guns that we saw these individuals buy would begin turning up at crime scenes in the United States and in Mexico, and yet we still did nothing. I recall, for example, one suspect, as he met with another, received a bag full of cash. That cash, he then proceeded to a local FFL who conducted a transaction of firearms that we had authorized him to do. This straw purchaser then left the fire, federal firearms dealer and met again with that third party and delivered the firearms to him. And still we did nothing. Although my instincts maybe want to intervene and interdict those weapons, my supervisors directed me and my colleagues not to make any stop or arrest, but rather to keep him under surveillance while allowing the guns to walk. Surveillance operations like these were the rules. They were not the exceptions. This is not a matter of some weapons that had gotten away from us or allowing a few to walk so that we could follow them to a much larger, more significant target. Allowing loads of weapons that we knew to be destined for criminals was the plan. This was the mandate. I remember a lecture by Army Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. I borrow from it now. ATF is supposed to be the guardians, the sheepdogs that protect against the wolves that prey upon us, especially along our southern border. But rather than meet the wolf head on, we sharpened his teeth added number to his claw. All the while we sat idly by watching, tracking, and noting as he became a more efficient and effective predator. Prior to my coming to Phoenix, I had never been involved in or even heard of an operation in which law enforcement officers would let, gun walk, let guns walk. The very idea of doing so is unthinkable to most law enforcement. I and other field agents involved in this operation repeatedly raised these concerns with our supervisors. In response, we were told that we simply did not understand the plan. I cannot begin to think of how the risk of letting guns fall into the hands of known criminals could possibly advance any legitimate law enforcement interest. I hope the committee will receive a better explanation than I.